What's up everybody? This video we are going to be talking about some of the... Hold up. Hold up. I just wanted to mention before we get started, <laughs> I am releasing a C programming crash course, which is going to be basically everything from this series, but condensed into everything you need to know as fast as possible. <laughs> but it's a really great way to learn if you're rushed on time or you're preparing for a job, or you just need to review your C programming skills, but you don't feel like watching a 100 part series. So please be sure to check out the link in the description if that's something you're interested in. And now let's get started. <laughs> this video is going to be talking about some of the more complex parts of C programming, specifically something known as the input stream. So when we type in the console, that goes to a temporary location. Um, it allows us to temporarily store data to be uh, assigned to variables and that is known as the input stream or buffer. So that really didn't make any sense. Let me visualize it. So this is our keyboard. We have all these keys and we're pressing them and we're typing words. Well, this goes into the buffer, which then gets used to assign to variables, for example, like the variable D or whatever. Um, and you can think of this, uh, this stream as a sequence of characters, right? So let's say we create an application and it asks for your age. Well, let's say we put in the value 32 and then we press enter. Well, what actually gets put into the input stream is a 32 and then the new line. So when we're using input functions, they're all going to work with this input stream slightly differently. And so far we've talked about scan F. It's the most simple input function, but it's not the best for protecting against user input issues. So it's, it's okay for beginners, but as you start making more complex C programming applications that are going to be released to the public, you might want to look into some of the different input functions. Um, in general, I think there's some other more important things in C programming that you should focus on first because you're a beginner. So I wouldn't get so tied up on how the best optimized way to get user input until you're actually legitimately releasing an application. Right now, ScanF is going to serve you just fine. And that's probably what I'm going to be using for the upcoming videos. So how does ScanF work? Well, if we say ScanF, and then we pass in a, uh, a string expression such as uh, percent %d. This means we're gonna get some uh, integer uh, data. Um, you could also use percent %i. And then we're going to store that in the uh, variable d. Well, what's gonna happen is it's going to take this number assign that to D and this new line is going to be stuck in the the buffer or the input stream. So what that means is if we do another scanf, there's a possibility it might just grab this new line character and it's not going to ask the user for more input. And this is really annoying and really confusing because it doesn't happen all of the time. And this is what I'm saying. This is like why the heck does it have to be so complicated? Why can't it just be consistent and make sense? <laughs> you have to know at a under, you have to understand it at a pretty deep level to really make sure you're getting user input right. So for example, if we asked for another um, integer data, it's going to look at the input stream, see this new line, and it's going to ignore it, and then it's going to ask the user for more input. So we could say 23 the next time. Well, it works fine in that scenario, which is great, but what if we asked for a character? So instead of a, uh, a number, we asked for a character. Well, now this new line is a perfectly good character, right? So it's gonna grab that character and assign that to whatever variable we, we're using in this function. So in that situation, it's not going to ask the user for more input. And half the time it works when you're getting numbers, it works. And then when you're getting characters, it doesn't work. <laughs> so what you need to understand is that when you are using scanf multiple times in your program, sometimes you have to flush the input stream and basically get rid of any um, new line characters. 
And you can do that with a function called get car or get char. And what this is going to do is it's going to just get the, uh, the, the, the one character from the input stream. So assume we haven't entered this in yet. We just put in 32 and then press enter and then we run get car. Well, it's going to grab that new line. So you're going to want to put this in between any uh, scan Fs where you, you assume there might be an issue. So in this situation, if we wanted to get a number and then we wanted to get a character, we would want to flush that input stream using get car or get char. I like get car because it sounds like you're going to go get a car. <laughs> That's all I got for you guys. Hopefully that was helpful. Very odd. I, I would encourage you to do some research on this because I'm sure I'm not giving the best explanation and I'm not giving the, the fullest explanation because this is by no means my expertise. <laughs> also, I would encourage you to explore some of the different input functions and how they are different than scanf. So thank you guys. I'll be, uh, I'll be sure to keep in mind when we can utilize these new learnings in upcoming videos. And that's all I got for you guys. So thank you for watching. And don't you forget to check out my C program. <laughs>